and I will be speaking on detecting and exploiting cross-site scripting with OWASP Synodix XSS exploit framework. And a bit about myself, I am an information security enthusiast, uh, I am 20 years old, I got no jobs, no company, I am still a student and I code in C++, .NET, Java, PHP and Python and I am a strong supporter of free and open information security education. So that's why I run a website called Kerala Cyberforce. And uh, I also run a small DEFCON chapter in Kerala to promote this. And I'm just another learner. So, what is XSS? I think everybody knows what's XSS. It's just a common vulnerability that, uh, that, uh, that exists in uh, different web application which allows an attacker to uh, inject malicious codes into the web application. And later, this injected web application is presented to a victim and this particular code will get executed in the browser side. So, if you look into the history of XSS, it was, the, uh, it was ranked among the top second in OWASP 2010 and in, now currently in 2013, its, uh, its rank is going to be down, that's some third rank, it's, it's ranked third. Then, this particular flow occurs in web application when uh, the web application takes untrusted data and send it back to the web browser without proper escaping and validation. So, if you are talking about accesses, some times ago it was not, it was not a deal. Uh, people think that it's a low rank, uh, it's not a great vulnerability. Say access, uh, SQL injection, LFI, RFI, SSI, etc. These are all vulnerabilities, and accesses is just script alert. So. Uh, people also always think that uh, it, all the possibilities of phishing or cookie stealing or something like that. And later on, tools like Beef, XSS Tunnel, uh, something like XSF and Shell of Future by Mr. Lava Kumar, etc., change the scene. So people started to people started to understand that uh, XSS is a real threat. Some of the uh, you know like some of the potentials of XSS are like tunneling, client side code injection, DOS attacks, distributed DOS attacks, cookie stealing. Then about uh, malicious malware drive-by downloads, then phishing, etc. So, what is OWASP Synodix XSS Exploitation Framework? This is it, and uh, it's basically a penetration testing framework, which is used to, which is written in Visual Basic .NET, and its component is completely coded in uh, C++ or Java. It can be used to detect and exploit cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in web application. Uh, it's uh, divided into uh, two parts. That is basically a first part is an XSS scanner. The next part comes with an XSS exploitation framework. So we'll look into the scanner module, and it is having inbuilt payload list of over 500 plus XSS payloads. Uh, and uh, there are common XSS protection filters like using string replace filter, the HTML, HTML entities filter, HTML special characters filter, etc. So most of these weekly designed filters. And uh, WAPs can be bypassed with the inbuilt payload list. It's having almost 500 plus XSS payloads. And uh, if you look into this, uh, this is an interesting thing. This is the payload comparison of different commercial as well as freely available tools. Uh, you can see the payload count. And uh, I believe it have the second largest XSS payloads. The first payload, uh, the largest payload is with the IBM app scan. It's having something about 700 payloads. Uh, sorry, 700 million payloads, which is artificially generated based on the scenario. And uh, uh, one of the features is the payload encoder. This particular thing supports encoding into different formats to bypass the firewalls and warps. Okay, let's have a look into the demo. So, this was an XSS vulnerability that was uh, found in the Lens website, Lens communication website. So for testing it, all you have to do is that just specify the URL you want to test and you have to specify the parameter over there. After that, you can test in manual mode based on some time interval or you can automate it. So if you are going with the automatic mode, then you can specify the time interval over there. And you can start attack or start the scanning. 
So it will check all the payloads in the payload list one by one. There's almost five, uh, 539 payloads. So that's it. So you got live response and uh, then one of the interesting feature of uh, the third version is the XSS multi-parameter scanner. Uh, I will show it in a demo. So here is a, just a second. Sorry about that, it's not uh, coming out in this resolution. So I'll just explain the thing. Yeah, so all you have to do is that you have to specify the URL with the multiple parameters there. So the tool will get all the parameters, individual parameters, and it will test all the parameters one by one. You don't have to take test, you don't have to take particular parameter and test it the one and then you have to go to the next you don't have to do like that all, all the tool the tool will automate everything so it will grab all the parameters and it will just one by one so that's about the multi parameter scanner and this is the fusser so you know like suppose you want to fuss around with the parameters this one will be uh, you know a great uh, benefit for you because you can just fuss almost any part of the particular URL suppose you may want to detect some HTTP parameter pollution or something like that so all you have to do is that you have to replace with the uh, open bracket, capital X and close bracket to the particular area on which you have to fuss around. So you can replace with this particular thing and you can f start fussing with the payloads there. So that's XSS fusser in that. And now we go to the exploitation framework. The first feature is the XSS keylogger. It's basically a JavaScript and PHP implementation keylogger, uh, which uh, the server is running on a quick PHP server and uh, a vulnerable web application is injected with the particular javascript and whatever the victim types are uh, enter, uh, made, whatever keystroke the victim made on that particular page will be uh, stopped and sent to the php server for uh, further processing so you may look into the demo So first I have to uh, run the particular server on my IP. And I have to start the keylogger. So it will generate the scripts that can be injected. Uh, the basic purpose of the tool is not offensive. You can use this to create, uh, you know, like PO proof of concept that is a bit more convincing to your clients. So this is a XSS vulnerability in Brothers of website. So I just injected the particular script over there. And you can see, uh, whatever I type in any particular text box, it doesn't need it to be a text box. Whatever you type over that particular document, over that web page, it will be there. It will be there in your console, you can see in the top. So whatever you type on the document, it doesn't need to be any username uh, like login field or something like that. Whatever you type in that a particular document will be there. So I just type something like Nelcon Rock, so it's there. Okay, that's it. Now 
Uh, another feature of the exploitation framework is a drive by downloader. It's nothing but it's it's just a Java drive by download. Basically, uh, what happens is that uh, from the uh, in internal view, there is a particular uh, web page which is embedded with a malicious jar file. And uh, once the victim or the one visits that particular website, this particular cl client or jar file got executed, and that particular file can access your command from it, and it will write down some codes in uh, it will write down some codes and forms a win config or BBS. And this particular Visual Basic script will download, uh, which will fetch an executable from a remote URL and will download it to your uh, temp directory and it will execute it. So that's how it's done. So from the tools perspective, what you have to do is that you just need to mention the URL to the particular malicious or uh, test executable. And after that, uh, it will generate the links, just embed it in the application and it will do the rest. I'll show you a demo. So here also I'm setting up uh, a server in my IP. And I'm specifying the URI to the particular executable that should be downloaded in the drive -wise. It will generate the scripts that you can inject can inject any of them based on the particular uh, level of the vulnerability, access vulnerability. And you can just in inject our uh, internet application. So once it is given to the victim and if we visit the website, actually this particular injectable code is for a refresh, meta refresh. So it will be re, uh, the page will be redirected, uh, re redirected to the particular page which serves the drive by download. And if the victim runs it, and uh, this particular reversal does need some permission, so that's why it's asked for USC. And if we click, if we uh, uh, click with yes, then you will get back a reverse shell. So there goes the reverse shell. I mean, this is not for the offensive way. If you can code it in some way, like uh, you know, uh, some uh, reverse trojans that doesn't need any permissions, so that can be a little more stealth. But but uh, why I did is that because like you know, just for creating the POCs. So that's why. And uh, next feature is uh, access is DDoSer. It basically harvests the power of HTML5. We have some components in HTML5 like the uh, web sockets and XML HTTP request for the course or the cross origin resource sharing. So what we're going to do is that we will exploit this, uh, we will abuse this particular web socket and we will create numerous uh, web socket connections. And the same way we will abuse the XHR objects and we will create numerous get requests with a fake parameter and a random value. And why we go with the fake parameter and random value is because suppose you make a say uh, etc etc uh, request to a particular website and if the uh, the response header say the access control allow OG, and that particular value uh, is not configured properly that means uh, if the particular website or web server replace with uh, a value called star in the uh, access control allow OG, then it can accept course otherwise if it's some domain or something is different over there it won't accept uh, the thing is that once your browser get a response, something say like uh, it won't accept from this particular domain on which uh, you are trying to uh, initiate the attack, our browser will refuse to send further packets, uh, further request. So what we are going to do is that to bypass that, we will be adding a fake parameter and uh, a fake random value. So for that, we will be adding a fake parameter there and with the math function, we will be doing some random values. So that's it and uh, this is a demo. This is not a distributed denial of service attack, this is just a DOS attack. It's done on my private site, just for the testing purpose. And uh, it's a low profile website. So that's why it's uh, taken down in just, you know, like, uh, with a DOS attack. It's not a distributed attack, shown in this demo. So you will know what is it capable of, this particular HTML scripts, HTML5 cap, uh, scripts. 
<coughs> so we are starting the server and uh, I'll be mentioning the particular uh, target. So you can inject this, uh, the one side of this, uh, one side of this uh, vulnerability is that, suppose uh, if this particular script is injected, if it is a reflected axis, uh, no, it's a persistent axis, then, uh, you know, uh, the destruction that is caused by this one is great, because uh, if the victim is not knowing that he's, uh, he's doing some axis attack, uh, he's doing a DDoS attack. It's everything done in the background. So that particular script is executing, and after some time, you can see that access to that particular site is temporarily denied due to some, uh, you know, like high levels of concurrent traffic. So this is just a, you know, low-profile website which doesn't make, uh, which doesn't holds a lot of traffic, uh, a lot of request. So that's for the demo on that. Then it's a cookie thief. I don't think nobody needs any introduction on that. It's all the similar way. And uh, the features for the next build I'm thinking of is that uh, for support, uh, to give the support for Geeko and WebKit engines. Actually, I'm able to do, you know, like integrate this particular Geeko and WebKit engines. But the problem is that uh, I'm coding in Visual Basic.net. So at the compilation time, there is some problems, some reference problems and all. So I'm just still figuring it out. And uh, the next version, uh, there will be a support for testing access in the post parameters. Then testing for the headers, uh, for detecting the accesses, then automatic detection of uh, uh, the parameters rather than just uh, giving it manually. Then detection of the third kind, that's a DOM based accesses. Then an accesses proxy in the exploitation framework. So that's it. And uh, accesses in a popular website is a high security threat. And this particular tool can be used by security analysts to hunt accesses and for creating their POCs. I mean, convincible POCs, not just script allowed. And uh, most of the commercial tools are available either as scanners or either or, or this exploitation framework. And this one will act as both as a vulnerability scanner as well as an exploitation framework, and it is completely free. And uh, there are a lot of uh, tons of vulnerability reward programs like Google uh, bug bounty programs, Facebook bounty programs, etc. So go for your excess funding and grab your bounty. And uh, one thing I would like to tell, uh, this particular tool is uh, recently selected as the Black Hat Europe Arsenal list and uh, I'm not sure I can make it. So that's it. And any questions? Uh, source code has been published for this Not till now. I will publish this on my birthday that is coming May 31st. <laughs> okay, one question I'm having is, I'm not sure I was not able to attend the initial presentation. Okay. Uh, is it having any <clears throat> way through which the XSS, uh, the session of the uh, website can be maintained through multiple websites. Like, uh, let's say OS.org is uh, vulnerable to XSS. Yeah. Uh, I hacked that website. I mean, uh, I got the session. Yeah. Maybe Gmail. And uh, if from OS, I'm switching to Facebook.com mm -hmm. through a link or something mm -hmm. inside that OS only, is my session maintained? No. Okay, so that will break. That will break. That will break. Okay. Any more questions? Okay then, thank you. Thanks.